so uh, SQL Server 2016 came with a nice feature, and that is our server. <coughs> Uh, first of all, thank you all to all the sponsors and organizers. You're doing a great job. A uh, couple of words about me. Uh, 15 years into data science and data analysis. But most of all, been working in retail for the past 10 years, so all of my focus is mainly customer orientation and data mining in terms of any kind of, um, you know, any kind of actions that you need to have your um, marketing people done and stuff like that. So first of all, <clears throat> a couple of um, barriers from my point of view. Um, first of all, talent scarcity. Um, a lot of people, you know, data scientists that really have this PhD in our knowledge are hard to find. Um, second of all, um, infrastructure, complex infrastructure, which means that, you know, one data set is there, one data set is there. So bringing all this together is a problem. Um, another one is speed. You know, you don't want to have your model being prepared half a year. You want the model being deployed in, I don't know, 10 hours. Um, and the last one, um, business value, of course. If you don't have speed, you don't have business value. And this is interesting. What Microsoft did was they kind of overcome all these barriers. Um, so they did um, our integration in SQL Server, which literally means that you don't need any more the DBAs and data wranglers and anybody doing something with the data in SQL Server or in databases or in Hadoop or in clusters anywhere. Now you can do it on your own if you have any kind of statistical knowledge, mathematical knowledge, background knowledge. It also means that um, a lot of load is taken off the back of the data scientists. Um, also it means that um, you can now deploy the models much faster. So you don't need to wait for your data scientists or the data scientists. Um, the data scientists can deploy the code, which is in R, and you can have data renders, for instance, doing stuff for you. And of course, um, also the low costs and all the questions, whether R is open or not, how does this affect big companies? Microsoft took care of that as well, so they developed a um, couple of packages which help, um, you know, load, um, <coughs> compute mass amount of data. Plus, they will have some sort of lifetime guarantee support. Um, and also interoperability in terms of you can have data reside in, um, how does this point to work? Ah, yeah. So we can have data reside in the cloud, on the, in the premises, or in, in different files, so anything goes. So what is R? I think it's quite stupid to have this slide because <laughs> everybody knows what R is. But the fact is what Microsoft did was, <coughs> as um, Gabor at, at the beginning showed, Microsoft is also in R consortium. And Microsoft is doing with R some sort of a movement, which means that they are making it even more, um, they are actually proud of integration, this integration, and they are making it even more um, open, more appropriate for people. Um, it is a community, it is a language, and it is a system, of course. Um, we all know the limits. I think we've seen with a couple of the um, two or three <laughs> presentations, a couple of the limits. One is, of course, the memory. Uh, it is interpreted language versus compiled performance. We all know that. Um, data movement. You know, you do all the stuff somewhere and then you put it in Excel. We don't want that. Um, and of course, um, how about the community support versus enterprise utilization? So these were also a couple of things that Microsoft needs to um, overcome in terms of when it comes to um, putting R into a corporate environment and SQL Server. So in 2015, I think it was April, Microsoft acquired Revolution Analytics. All those familiar with Revolution Analytics, they had two products. One was Community R Open, and the other one was R Enterprise, which was a playable edition. Um, what they did was they essentially kept those two versions. So they, they created Microsoft R Open, and they created a couple of services or servers. One is R Server, which is available in different, different flavors, depending on whether you are from Linux or the Windows platform, whether you want to run data in Hadoop, whether you want to run data in Teradata. 
And one is also our services, which is natively supported in Windows to SQL Server 2016. Um, so, <clears throat> what is Microsoft doing? Um, in delivering, uh, it delivers our open, our client, our services, our server, and a couple of these different flavors. I just want to stress a couple of things. Our open um, is open, it's, you don't have to pay for anything. Uh, it is available there. But, um, and then there is our client. If you want to you know, take the burden off your data scientist, have our client installed on you know, data wranglers computers and have them do some of the statistical analysis, which means they will have the benefits of uh, massive parallelization and they will have benefits of data distrib distributing between the different nodes, uh, but they will, will not have uh, needs to have our services or our server installed on their computer and also they can push uh, the computational um, tasks into the cloud or into the um, any of those flavors or, or any of the um, servers. Um, so our server, it is evolved as I said from Enterprise Edition, it is based on open source R. Uh, it is adaptable for enterprise because which is a huge, huge, huge plus. I had an issue a couple of years ago when I need to create it. I need to have a um, recommendation engine created. Um, analysis services is a great thing. Those who are into Microsoft world, uh, analysis services is a great thing, but we couldn't deliver much of it. So I, it was 2013, I think, I had to develop our framework to communicate with SQL Server. Um, and then I posted everything, all the code and everything to a couple of forums and people were saying, well, you're crazy, you know, what you are doing is, you know, insane. Uh, but then, it was kind of a negative feedback, but then I've seen people coming to this code from uh, huge companies, from the enterprises, and I've seen that they, they need some much more scalable, not scalable, but much more open, maybe much more free product to have been playing around in, let's say, in, in sandboxes to do some sort of statistical analysis, to do st uh, data preparation and stuff like that. So I'm very glad that Microsoft did this to have everything put into the enterprise edition. Um, and, um, you know, a couple of those things. Mm, so are open. So it's this section right here. It's available for anybody. You can download it from Microsoft website. Um, all the R code runs unchanged, which is a perfect thing. So you can have your packages um, and all your R code being run against the Microsoft database. Um, and then there is deploy R and develop R packages. Deploy R is perfect and very powerful in terms of um, pushing the data through using a a a a APIs. Um, where it is? It's not right here. Uh, so, which means that you don't need to have R installed on any other machines, you can just call an API and um, you can have R basically run on any kind of machine, uh, any kind of, you know, maybe it's a tablet or a phone or whatever. And then there is the developer package, which is uh, Eclipse based, I think, and uh, it runs in Visual Studio. Um, and um, for those who are Linux users, you can use R Studio. And then there are three very important packages. So it's connect R and distributed R, which work together. So one provides different type of connectors to a different type of database. And the other one is basically responsible for distribution of the workloads and the data. And then there is the scale R algorithm package, which is absolutely perfect. What Microsoft did was they took, I don't know, most commonly used um, functions, so for data preparation, descriptive statistics, sampling, predictive modeling, simulation, clustering, classification, and some other stuff, and they rewrote everything, C++, made it available for heavy uh, parallelization and no distribution. So it means that you can run you know, any kind of data um, with this package and you will get much better results. So in fact it means that architecture basically remains the same. Um, what it does with the data connectors then 
migrates the data and um, it doesn't have any memory limitations. Um, it has scalable and parallel algorithms from the scale R package. Um, so by each block of data, it is using a um, XDF um, data file, which means that XDF stands for external data frame. Um, it is highly compressed. Um, I can show you an example, a demo. Um, you get a 17 megabyte um, data set, and the XDF file compresses to a one and a half megabyte or something. Um, then it is distributed, it, 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 it does not have any RAM limitations, and it is computed using R. Um, it is just you write once, you deploy it anywhere, it runs in any of those systems. Um, I'll just jump, I think, to, um, okay, first of all, how the code looks. So this is for those who are uh, familiar with SPL language, this is Transact SPL. So this is what Microsoft is doing. Uh, they are um, injecting our script into the um, Transact SPL world. So you can see you're referencing the library and then you can do, you know, prediction, predictive models. So this is the traditional R code. And, uh, and this is the scale R algorithm. So it effectively does the same, but you can see there is always some sort of X in between. Um, it doesn't require um, the previous library, it requires Revel scale R library, and it does basically the same. Uh, for those who are data scientists, data wranglers, the usage of R in um, database is outstanding and multi purposeful, multi functional. Um, how the code looks in R, um, video, um, effectively relatively the same, uh, but I want to show you, we have, we have a couple of minutes, I'll show you a demo. Uh, so I've, <clears throat> do you see the code? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so I've created an ODBC connector to, the, to my database and I'll just get some of the data. So what I'll do is I'll use the um, standard K means clustering and you will see the computation time. You see it's Around three, oops, around three and a half seconds. Not bad, but you know, I have, I only have 140,000 rows, which is, yeah. Uh, and now I'll use the Rebel Scale library, and what it will do is, um, it uses chunks, so you can see, it's sort of the. Um, splits the data in different chunks, so it uses different nodes, uh, and in this case it elapses in less than one second, usually it's around uh, half a second, but this is the case of the live presentation demo, it doesn't always go the way you wanted it to go. <coughs> and as I said, you know, it is also, um, you can use it for, for instance, the result from this um, package, you can also use it with a ggplot. Fairly simple, very useful, um, going back to the slides. Um, so what, is, what are the benefits? Mainly, the, you don't have to worry about data movement. Um, some of the roles can be, you know, data scientists don't need to have everything on their backs. Um, no, no more limits in the memory and RAM, uh, the bottlenecks and performance gone. Um, and that's it. And also, what Microsoft did for those who are in enterprise um, companies, um, they also took care of the SLA terms and agreements, so we don't have to worry about that as well. I have a couple of more demos for those who are interested in that. Um, during the lunch, I'm free, and come hit me with the questions. So that's it. Thank you. I like that logo. <laughs>
Um, so you can use um, scale R is available for um, client version, um, but uh, if you want to have the full package, so the, the whole stack I showed, you have to have enterprise edition. Oh, I see. Okay. So if you just go, it really depends on how much core and, and, and what kind of machine you want to run to. But um, I can show a quick demo. I have a one and a half gigabyte of data here, and I'm running it on my laptop, and I'm doing some sort of a simple statistics, and it just chunks all the data, and it does that as well. So you can also use some sort of light version of that, but you won't have the ability of all the connectors and stuff like that, which is available in enterprise edition. Yeah. Who wants to see more code? Oh, you want to go for a lunch? I'm for the lunch. Okay, so thank you very much.